can the new M2 Max MacBook Pro beat out an i9 3080Ti Windows beast of a laptop? Well, today we will find out because we're going to be testing everything from benchmarks to real world productivity with video editing, photo editing, 3D rendering, and much more. Now, believe it or not, but this MSI Crater Z16P costs more money than this MacBook Pro. Now, here is the full spec sheet side by side. You guys can see that it has double the RAM and twice the storage, but if we spec up the MacBook the same way, it still costs $100 less. So this isn't some cheap Windows laptop. It is specced out to the max. That 3080 Ti is expensive and has 16 gigs of dedicated memory Whereas the M1 Max chip has to share that 32 gigs with everything. Now, yes, the CPU here is not a 13 gen. Those are not out yet, but we do have one on order. that's gonna be coming soon. So make sure you guys subscribe. But this is still a 14 core processor compared to a 12 core. And it runs it up to five gigahertz compared to 3.7 on this one. Now, it also comes with a massive 240 watt power brick compared to 140, because this thing sucks down power. So we will also see how it does when we unplug it. Now, I also have to say that the build quality is phenomenal. This thing feels like a MacBook. It's made out of metal. There's very little flex. We have a ton of ports, multiple Thunderbolt ports. The keyboard also feels great. And although the trackpad is not as good as Apple's, it is still one of the best Windows trackpads out there. The MSI display is also very nice. It has a high resolution, it is sharp. It's also DCI-P3 color accurate, but the contrast levels are nowhere near as good and it has more reflectivity because Apple's anti-reflectivity coatings are much, much better. The display is also more vibrant because it is mini LED. Now, this also has a higher refresh rate, 165 hertz compared to a 120, but unlike the MacBook, it doesn't have ProMotion where it can scale down. But one benefit is that it is actually a touch screen, which also is why it has more reflectivity. And with that, they actually have a really nice pen with a lot of different uh, sensitivity pressure levels. So if you wanna draw on it, that is definitely a benefit. Now, Windows laptops are always advertising their high-end speakers with brands, and this one seems to have a good system. So let's go ahead and compare them. Well, while there's no denying that the MSI gets loud, there is no bass. And a lot of the mints are lacking too. Whereas the MacBook has those woofers that sound absolutely amazing, unbelievable for such a laptop of this size. And this is the MSI's 1080p webcam quality along with the front facing microphones. And this is the MacBook Pro's 1080p webcam with its studio quality microphones. Let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better down in the comment section below. Now, before I dive deep into performance, I gotta talk about the best MagSafe iPhone case I have ever seen, the Magic Stand case from our partner, KSKU. Not only is it surprisingly slim and durable, but it also comes with a very strong 48 magnet MagSafe ring that actually doubles as a stand. Just pull out the ring to use it as a finger grip or a stand for watching videos at any angle between 40 and 120 degrees. And the best part is that it folds back completely flush with the case so you can still use it with your MagSafe chargers and accessories. So use the link below to get 23% off your order today. Now getting into performance, I wanna let you know that our MSI is set to the best performance mode and it is plugged in while our MacBook is unplugged. And the first test that I wanna do is an SSD speed test. And it looks like the MSI's two terabyte SSD is about 150 megabyte per second faster in terms of read speed, but the MacBook is way faster in terms of write speed. I'm talking 2,300 megabyte per second faster, and it's only a one terabyte. And now let's run Geekbench 5 and see what kind of a difference we get with such a massive clock speed on the MSI. And once again, I'm reminded of the old Intel days where even in Geekbench, 
this system is ramping up its fans while the MacBook's fans are completely shut off. All right, well, I was not expecting this because the MacBook beat out the MSI in both single core, which I thought it would, as well as multi-core. We have a 12% difference in single core and Apple did clock the M1 Max higher than the M1 Pro, but in multi-core, it also beat it out. Now, not by much, it's just 5%, but it did. Now I'm excited to see what we get in Cinebench. We're gonna max out the CPUs, but first I wanna test out web browsing and web-based application performance using Figma that is brought to you by our partners at 500 Designs. Now, a lot of people use the software and the first thing I'm gonna do is just zoom in over here, see how smooth everything is. Nice and smooth on the MacBook. Let's go down here and see how long it takes to load up some of these images. A Little bit of glitchiness, but pretty much instant to load up uh, these high resolution photos. Let's zoom in. And right there, as soon as I zoomed in, it was pixelated and then it refreshed it. Let's test out the Windows laptop plugged in here. Also a little bit of glitchiness, but pretty quick. How about down here? Definitely a lot longer. That was about three seconds or so to load up that high resolution image compared to, I think it's practically instant over here. And now I'm gonna export these 12 high resolution layers into a website. And that took a minute and 35 seconds on the Mac. Let's see how long it takes on the Windows. All right, the MSI took two minutes to do this. So even though Geekbench was just slightly faster, this is 27% faster in real life web-based applications and it's on battery. And for simple web browsing, the MacBook is 35% faster and more responsive. Now I really wanna compare the graphics, but first we have to push these CPUs to their limits. So I also have some hardware info right here. Wow, the MSI is running at 82 watts compared to 33 on the Mac. We hit 96 degrees Celsius on the MSI right there. The fans are ramping up, but our Mac fans are still off and it's running way cooler. This MSI does have a beefy vapor chamber cooling system, but it is still slowing itself down. We're now running at about three gigahertz in order to keep itself from getting too hot because it just sucks a lot of power. Now it's been about seven minutes and things have settled down. So I wanna do a thermal test here. The MSI is hot, 52 degrees right there on the exhaust. In the center here, 47, 46. And if we look at it, the hottest spot, 53 there. If you guys could see, it's actually blowing all over the MacBook, heating up that whole side, which otherwise would be as cool as this. My goodness. Now the Mac, 41 right there, the hottest. 40, 39, compared to 52, dang. Now they're actually running at about the same clock speeds, which is interesting, but the MSI is using about twice the power. We had 62 watts compared to 36. And of course the fans are blaring compared to being pretty much silent on the Mac, which now just finished. And we have a winner and it is actually the MSI 14,694 compared to 13,749. That is 7% faster while using almost twice the power and a lot of fan noise and plugged in. Now I'm excited for the 13 gen. Once again, we have that ordered, so make sure you enable your notifications. And now it's finally time to compare graphics performance with that 3080 Ti. Now I have the Wildlife Extreme Unlimited test here. So we have the same resolution. It's off screen, so resolution differences won't matter. All right, wow, that is kind of low. You know, it really frustrates me when you have high performance mode turned on in Windows, but then in NVIDIA settings, they have battery boost enabled, and then in MSI settings, they have smart auto mode enabled, and that's limiting your performance. So let's shut that off and let's run that again. All right, well, that is definitely better this time. We have 119.6 FPS for the 3080 Ti, but the MacBook actually beats it out, 150.8. That is 26% faster, and before I changed the settings, the Mac was 
40% faster. Now, the 3080 Ti that's in here, it's not the full on desktop or super high wattage one. They do cap the wattage so it doesn't get too hot. Uh, and with the M1 Max, the 3080 Ti definitely would have smoked it, but with the M2 Max, Apple actually added a lot more cache, a lot more TLB memory, which was a limitation before. And for gaming loads, it's actually really fast now. Of course, we don't have a lot of games for Mac. Now I'm running this without the power cable plugged in because I'm curious about this. And we have a score of, wow, okay, 4,627 and a half frames per second from 120. Now the MacBook is five and a half times faster because it doesn't lose performance when it's unplugged. Now we've seen this for many years now with these high-end NVIDIA graphics cards, even with Windows in high performance mode, I have enabled and all of the NVIDIA stuff disabled for power throttling and MSI stuff disabled. It still really throttles the graphics because that graphics card sucks a ton of juice and it needs this cable to be plugged in. But now let's let the NVIDIA graphics card shine with Blender 3D rendering. I have OptiX enabled, which means that it's gonna use the ray tracing cores to do this. And that's incredibly fast and something that the Mac doesn't have. Oh my goodness, this thing is flying. Now the M2 Max is way faster than before, close to twice as fast, but the NVIDIA card took 29.6 seconds compared to a minute and four seconds. That is more than twice as fast, so still way faster, even though Apple made really great improvements. Just make sure they have a power outlet next to you and you're plugged in, or else it gets incredibly slow. Now I'm gonna get into photo editing using Lightroom, which can use both the CPU and the GPU. And for some reason, this screen looks like it's in a force HDR mode, but I'm not gonna mess with it. Lightroom has a ton of cool AI features, so I'm gonna test out the sky detection. Right there, you guys saw it. That was a second or even less, super quick. Let's test out the Windows laptop. All right, about three seconds, so three times longer. And that's probably because of the neural engine built into the M2 Max. I have all 50 of these 42 megapixel raw images selected and let's go ahead and export them. The MSI switching between the CPU and GPU, maxing those out, while the Mac looks like doing very similar things, but it's hammering on the GPU. Both of these are fast, but the Mac is 31% faster, taking 39 seconds compared to 51. Now, neither of these machines throttle, actually, well, I guess this one slows down slightly over some time. So if you're doing 500 photos, which is what I did the last time I edited my personal photos, well, you're gonna be looking at maybe six minutes to roughly nine minutes or so. And I can't believe that the Mac was faster, even with that Nvidia graphics card. And should you be so unlucky not to have a power outlet, I had to run it, took a minute, 29 seconds, compared to 39. So the MacBook's two and a half times faster. And what's shocking me, it's been unplugged the whole time, we're still at 70% battery life through all this setup of these apps, all these benchmarks and tests. That is why a lot of people buy a Mac. And now let's get into video editing with DaVinci Resolve 18, which is really well optimized for both systems. Now, the first thing I wanna throw at it is very heavy noise reduction because this needs a ton of raw horsepower and you can't improve it using encoders or decoders or any other kind of specialized hardware. As you guys can see, the MacBook is averaging 13 frames per second playing this back, which is a great improvement compared to the previous one, but the 3080 Ti is averaging, let's see, it's going between 18, 19, 20. Looks like it's settled at 19. I thought 19, but now it's slowing down because the fans kicked up, meaning the system got hot. Now I'm glad I let this play longer because I was gonna call it 13 versus 19, uh, but now we're running at 13, 14, 13. I can't believe it, it's actually pretty much the same. Our Mac has its fans at the lowest speed possible, as you guys could see, and it's running cool. And now we're down to about 12, 11, 12 frames per second. Wow. I guess the 3080 Ti is meant for a much thicker laptop or of course a desktop, but the performance is practically the same 
which I didn't expect. And now I have a five minute 6K Blackmagic RAW project here. I didn't want to go too easy because these are high end laptops, but as far as RAW codecs, this is on the easier side. Both play it back perfectly. And if we take a look at our graphics usage, it's only 24%. We have a lot of overhead here, but on the Mac, wow, it's actually using less. I did not expect that. That means that the Mac might actually have more raw power for processing effects and color grades, LUTs, that kind of stuff. Now, what happens if we unplug this thing from power? Okay, I'm gonna reset this. It was playing back perfectly. No. 14, 15 frames per second instead of 24. So it literally cannot process this raw footage because the system slows down the graphics. So now it's maxing out the graphics card and there's nowhere near enough performance. I honestly had much higher expectations for this 3080 Ti, but let's plug this sucker back in and we are gonna export this. Let's hit run and I expect it to be close because the raw performance and the playback and the GPU usage was very similar. So let's take a look. We're at 57.5 frames per second for encoding, but the Mac is at 133 and it is done. It, that is legitimately way faster. This is my first time testing Resolve. I've been doing Final Cut. That is incredible. 55 seconds compared to two minutes and 40 seconds. That is literally three times faster. That is insane. And if we try the MSI on battery, it's showing us 15 and a half minutes compared to 55 seconds on battery. You know what, Apple? We complain a lot about incremental updates and SSDs and stuff. But when you put something like this head to head, two machines, similar price tag, actually this one's 3,500 because I didn't load up on RAM or whatever. And you see how the real world performance compares, not just, Geekbench, you know, or some benchmark, it absolutely blows your mind. And then the rest of the high quality design, trackpad, speakers, display, I don't know how anybody else can compete. Now, let's hope that the new 13th gen Intel and the new RTX graphics cards can step it up because they really need to. If you guys wanna buy one of these, use that YouTube shopping feature down below. Let me know your thoughts on all of this. Click that circle button to subscribe. If this video brought you value or entertainment, check out one of those and I'll see you in the next video.